What up, though? I have been thinking about what I have been interested in and learning about for years. Personalities. Let me back up, y'all. What up? It's your girl, Victoria. Tori V. And you're tuned in to another episode of A Melanated Hypothesis Podcast. And I'm just really excited because I've been writing. Right? I have been writing and I have been researching and so, in my spare time, like, that's what I like to do. I like to research. I like to read. I like to understand because I want to understand myself. Because I see how much trauma affects me. I see how much trauma affects other people. And it's like, okay, I definitely think that I didn't. Okay, so I knew that it was connected to childhood. Childhood trauma is, is connected to how we behave. I studied psychology then i studied cultural anthropology and so i know that it it, it it goes to our culture and what we are raised and where we come from and, and the culture in that particular place and then i've done my black america tour i guess i did it you know solo on my own me and god where he took he took me to all these different places right so i went to new york i was in brooklyn on madison right and then i and then i was um where the fuck did I go? Child, I was up and down 95. <laughs> okay? I was in New Jersey. I was in Camden. Right? I was in, um... I, I was sleep on the New Jersey Turnpike. Like, that's how comfortable I am just living freely. Like, police knocked on my door. Hey, you can't sleep right here. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was tired, officer. I didn't know when this shit was ending. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. He was like, all right, just get up. <laughs> and then somebody sped past, so he ran off. Like, all right, you know, cool. <laughs> cool, like, but just out here, and I was super naive, right? I had this awareness of the world and this curiosity that I wanted to, to see, but it was because I felt like, what was wrong with me? Like, what is the difference between me and Taraji? We both come from D.C., we both, she went to Oxy Hill, I went to Potomac, you know, we both was, like, I didn't go to Howard because I wanted to get the fuck up out of D.C., so I, but I was on Howard cam campus, I, w I used to go intern at Listen Vision right across the street, like, right across the street, you know what I'm saying, so I was right here with it, like, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, I went to Hyde, people don't know Hyde, if I say McKinley Tech, people are like, oh, yeah, nah. okay, right, right next to it, <laughs> it was Hyde. I went there. I also went to TAF. People be like, I don't know what TAF is. You know Choice? Oh, the alternative school? Yeah, they right next to it. <laughs> right next to it was the, the alternative school for, for kids, for elementary school kids, the bad kids or whatever, right? I went there. So I had all these encounters with tra trauma and different type of black people and culture, right? And so I have been observing these things, right? Because my trauma stole my voice. So I couldn't express myself. I couldn't tell people what was going on with me. So I would write. And I would have these powerful writings because I wrote in metaphors, right? I don't know. Something made me stop writing. I guess I started talking. I don't really know. I don't know what happened. I, I think I did discover speaking and talking to people. And so being able to talk to people and help people through their thing based on just how I get through my thing. Like, oh, I've been suicidal. You know, I used to um, donate money. I would get paid and I would set aside a little bit of money. And I would donate money to on... I guess I was on Tumblr. And so on Tumblr, there would be like um, transgender kids or something. I don't know. People, right? Just young adults. I don't know how old they were. However, it didn't matter. But they, it would be like these people that felt like they were in a different body. You know, that they were binding down their chest. Or they just needed money to bind their chest down. Get a buy a binder. Right? 
And so I had talked to so many people who just felt they just hated themselves because they thought that they should be this or this way or this way. And I wanted to help cure. I was trying to enable in whatever way I could, right? I just wanted to, to, to be there for people like I wanted someone to be there for me. Whatever your dream was, whether I thought it was right, good or right or otherwise. Now, if it was just plain wrong, I wasn't really down for that. But, like, you know, I, I remember being on uh, MLK, walking from Anacostia to the big chair. And um, this dude I went to school with, he was like, yeah, man. He was like, I never felt like I should be a boy. I feel like I'm a girl in a boy's body. And I didn't know what gay was at the time. Like, we in, like, elementary school. So, it was, it was like, what do you, I don't know what you're talking about, but if you want to hug, I'm here. I literally told him that. He was just like, he just don't feel like he should be a, a, a dude. And so now as I'm thinking about that, I'm like, damn, I, I wish I could have asked him about trauma. Because sometimes I feel like trauma makes us question it. Because it pushes us, oh, whoever the gender of the, the abuser was, our brain pushes us away from the characteristics of the abuser. So if a woman, if if a woman abused me, sometimes I will shy away from women, and sometimes I will be trauma bonded to women. I only want to deal with women, right? And vice versa. If, if an abuser um, was a man, right? Sometimes I will want to. Uh, I'm trauma bonded, especially if it was a caregiver or somebody that I was supposed to feel safe around. So that means that. These high levels of stress make me feel safe. So I want to be around this abuser-like type of person that's like my abuser. Or it can make me say, um, I need to, the, the, it, it, it's too much, right? I need to retreat from these type of people. So it's like the brain works so, it's, oh, it's so fascinating, bro. It's so fascinating. I just, I think about these things. And so for years I've been studying just narcissism and, and trauma and not really knowing that, like, that's what it is. Like, that is such a big thing that it's trauma. I fully believe it's belief, but you believe based on your trauma. So, again, we have to look at our trauma, right? And it goes all the way down to like fetus being a, a baby being a, a not even a baby yet it's like what is the parent what are the parents going through what energy are they in that makes it so powerful it's mm. it's something that i am I'm just wanting to express because the trauma can, for me, I feel like my hypothesis is, my hypothesis is that the trauma makes us, can, like we're all, we all have narcissistic traits. So the trauma can push us higher on a scale. It's like an old scale at the doctor's office when they push the little thing like that is the scale of narcissism and it's a spectrum and so we all are on it but it I'm like we're on a lot of spectrums but we're all we all are on it and then trauma pushes us higher on it so i to me it's like i see people are people so it's like even a narcissist i feel like that's that's still a person if they can become aware of what's going on with them, then they have they they now have the power to change it. But I just don't feel like it's just oh they're a narcissist and they just don't wanna. They just like no, I feel like they genuinely believe how they believe because of their trauma. And so they have to wake up. Like they have to wake up 
they're sleepwalking through life essentially like shout out to Dave like they're sleepwalking through life because of their trauma though and that's why you know what I'm saying they some of them won't get on the couch get off the couch it's an Everest commercial what are you doing like it's some of them just can't right and they dreaming of the better life oh my goodness it's gonna be lit but they just cannot get off the, the trauma got them is holding them back like the trauma is Freddy Krueger is holding them back like images of movies and stuff, stuff is coming in my head right now but like it's it's holding them back right and they don't even realize it they just think they chilling they want to chill they they tired and stuff that's what they think but no trauma literally is holding you back bro like Freddy Krueger on the movie when he was holding the girl back on the on the couch yes that's trauma. Hello. Like, literally, Freddy Krueger, that's why I love that movie so much. He is my favorite. He's my favorite. He's my favorite because it's it's clearly, it goes back to childhood trauma. Oh, my goodness. No, because it's literally, like, I didn't even realize that's why I like it so much. Because it literally shows you what childhood trauma does. I love Freddy Krueger movies. And then they funny, he got a, like, because as an observer, like, you know what it is, like, but it's like, it's like little Victoria. Like, she know when she pull up, she know she ain't supposed to be here with it, but she here now, what? This is not what we supposed to be doing, but this is what I'm finna do, like, and you can't tell me nothing. I had trauma, all these people that did all these things to me, fuck you, nigga, like, she gonna wild out, like, she don't care, she's gonna be Freddy, like, she don't care, Right? She got an excuse. She a victim. It's a reason. She doing this to you. Why you? Oh, you. You so mad. Da, 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 da. That give her life. Because you know how many times all them people didn't hurt her? That's Freddie. So that's why it gives them power when you feed into it. That's why you can't feed into little Victoria. You can't feed into the effects of trauma. Right? I have to be in control of myself as higher self, you know, as, as big Victoria, whatever you want to call it. Lisa Nichols, you know, she'd be like, little Nick, <laughs> little Nisa. Like, you know, like, I got to look at it all kind of ways. Like, I have to have practices. Up, oh, that ain't working. Up, oh, little Victoria, chill, chill out. Up, oh, that ain't working. Let me, let me pat my shoulders, okay? Let me hold you. It's okay. It's all right. What? I will break out in the bank, like. What you mean? Is she a mummy? What's happening? Mind your business. <laughs> like, mind your business, okay? I'd rather stand here and hug myself than knock your ass out. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's the quiet ones. I don't be doing all that talking. I, I can't get the words together to articulate what I'm feeling once I get to a high stress level. So I just react, right? I got the, I'm smart as fuck. I, I know what I'm trying to say afterwards in the, like, in the interrogation room. I got you. I can tell you what happened. I'm aware. But in the moment, right, in the moment, I'm just going to react. I'm just going to go to that bottom baseline lining of, of how the brain works. I'm going to go to my animalistic brain. All ration goes out the window. You start at emotion, and then you move up to logic. So that's why pausing for a minute, breathing, is important. Because you will react in emotion, and it be all, it's all wrong. People lose their, their, their freedom over that, right? Their lives over that, over not taking a second to breathe, right? And so I have to figure out these things about myself. I see it. I'm very introspective. Come on, I had it right. Interceptive. I'm very intuitive. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I'm very aware of myself, right? But I'm not always understanding of culture. So I'm aware of myself, but I didn't know that y'all do this like this. So now I don't have common sense. But this is not common to me. So somebody would have had it explain it to me, right? And then, like, it's not like a hood book that you can read. All right, I'm finna go to, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, just whatever. Like, 
All right, I'm in Texas. It's got nothing to do see. Is, is Sugar Land a, a, a hood? Would that be? You know what I'm saying? Like, flip it through the pages. Let me see. That's not in here. Okay. Like, you know, just whatever it is. Like, I'm, I'm trying to, I have to make sure that even if I don't know the, the environment, like, when I think of that, when I was saying that, Chameleon came in. Like, I will blend in. But that's not, I don't want to blend in. I want to stand out. But I want to be, um, I want to have so much self-trust that if I stand out and somebody comes and, and provokes me or triggers me or um, I do the wrong thing because I don't know the culture here. Like, for example, the baby. He was doing the wrong thing because he didn't know the culture of um, the elite, I guess. Hollywood, whatever you want to call it. Right? And so he needed a PR because he just being himself and Hollywood is not, it's, it's entertainment, right? He's definitely an entertainer naturally, but that's also a grandiose personality. So like, I'm not a doctor, but he's higher on the narcissistic scale. And then how he treated, uh, I was going to say, oh, shorty, but like, I'm right here. What's her name? Danny Lee? We love Danny Lee, right? Um, how she, but how he displayed that was so distasteful. That's a, that's a, yeah, something's happening. All right, sorry. But the way he treated this, uh, yeah, distasteful. That was distasteful. So, Dag, is that what I came out? What the hell? It was real distasteful. Like, what's happening? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know. God is funny, but anyway, um, it was distasteful the way that that came out, and so that showed me that he's higher on a narcissistic scale and needs counseling nine times out of ten. He needs to talk to somebody, right? I I can understand that, right? Um, but it's like you have to be aware of these things. You have to be aware of the scale. You have to be aware of what it looks like to even be able to process yourself in it you have to be around people who understand it who are aware that's why always being around people that know more than you is important like be have your day ones but you need some day two threes and fours and you know what i'm saying you need to always be generating a network of people and it can be different type of networks networks got channels you got your elite network you got your basketball network, your spiritual network, your tech network, you know what I'm saying? Your ratchet network, you got your, uh, you, just whatever it is, right? You got your healing network, you got whatever it is, right? All the things. You, you need a variety because exposure is so important to our healing. I wrote that down yesterday. It's, it's so important to our healing. Somebody would expose him to... Okay, what you did there, like, that's not just you from the hood and don't got no manners. That is also, um, when we're from the hoods, something is usually lacking, right? And, it like, intent is so important because all of our parents did amazing. All of them did amazing for what they could do, for what they had the exposure for, for what they had dealt with. They, for, you know, what they knew. They did amazing, right? But they still had trauma. And a lot of them wasn't aware of how to get out of their trauma. A lot of them wasn't aware of how to get out of their economical troubles. A lot of them weren't aware of where to find support from. Or we only knew these few resources, right? So we did the best that we could with these things. But we got our own trauma that affects us and how we do things, how much patience we have and what we're willing to put up with and what we will allow. And you, you get what I'm saying? And so then as the person grows, the, the parent grows and develops boundaries, they teach their child these same things and treat their child in different ways right and so that may also be confusing to the child it's so many different things it's so many different things but we we lack stuff 
being in the hood. And we don't realize we lack it because we are great at doing amazing with what we have. That's what we were taught. That's what we've seen. We know how to be providers, if anything. We're going to provide for ourselves. We're going to provide for our families. Like, we're going to do these things, right? So having this this awareness, we're at different levels. Some of us are more spiritual than others. Some of us, you know, we, we have better eating habits than others some of us like we're all at different levels there's different levels of trauma we're all on different paths but we all usually are lacking something something big um right and so he um i feel like he's no different like i feel like he's famous and he's no different and the grandiosis is great, but I, I look at what's behind it, right? And so that gave me a little peek into who he really is. And so you don't got to, like, it's subtle ways to humiliate, humili humiliate people. Like, remember, I was talking about little Victoria. Yeah, you remember what they did to me? Right? How, he's short, right? So how many times do you think that before he was famous and big dog or whatever... He had to prove himself. So what do you think they did to him? Right? He from the hood. You know our cousins be fucking with us. What do you think they did to him? And and what do you think he internalized with that, right? Like, this is my hypothesis. I'm just I'm just using him as, as an example. I don't want to make an example out of anybody I know. But I'm just using him as an example because this is somebody in our culture that we all know. And he put the shit on, 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 the, he put the, shit on the internet, so let's talk about it. Okay, I'm talking about my shit. I'm putting it on the internet, all right? So, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm going to use what's on the internet. Because, essentially, I don't want to be a bad person. I don't want to, like, cause anybody trauma. Like, that's a, that's such a thing for me. But, um, like, I can't not say stuff. I see stuff. So, my thing is, if I do cause trauma, like, it's never my intention. So, let's talk about it. Let's, let's allow me to, you know hear your side and how it affects you so that I don't do these things again. Teach me, fix my crown. If I see something, I'm going to say something. That's what Tiffany Haddish said. And it's like, yeah, for real. When she see the ratchet girls at the show, she's like, uh-uh, chill out. This is how you're supposed to do it. Exactly. Because we don't know. The ratchet is just ignorance. When I, If I say ignorant to some too ratchet, it don't come out right. It's a bad connotation. But if I say ratchet, we love ratchet, okay? So, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. But, same shit, right? If I'm ratchet, I'm ratchet because I'm ignorant to something. I, I become more classy when I start to learn information. That is just how it is. When you get, uh, 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 you get information, you become bougie. Classy. Bougie has a bad connotation, too. She thinks she all that. No, she, she, she has, is developing her self-worth. When we are ratchet... We don't have our self-worth. We may look like it, but inside, we typically don't. Inside, there's something missing or lacking. And so then we can develop our self-worth because I feel like ratchet is, is also the behavior. It's the behavior of, maybe it's the behavior of ignorance. This is just my hypothesis. I'm just thinking now. But like, ratchet is the behavior of ignorance because I'm sophisticated ratchet, right? So I know how to fucking act. I know how to say it. I can enunciate and say the word correctly. But I have got so laxed in my ratchet, you know, it, it, it's just I in. It ain't no G. You know what I'm saying? The refrigerator. Like, you feel me? Like, <laughs> it's not. I got so laxed in my ratchet and my not knowing in my. But that's culture, right? Like, everybody said the refrigerator. In the fridge. Refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody say faux for faux. <laughs> Sorry, this is just coming to me. But everybody say faux for faux. Like, who's, who's like, yeah, let me get a four for four. Who says that? Like, <laughs> tell me, tell me, please put it in the chat. Do you say you want a four for four? Like, I, I don't even order the joint, but I've gotten it a few times. And I think that I've definitely been like, yeah, faux for faux. Let me get the, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> It's like, it's a part of culture, but 
the culture stems from, I look deeply at everything. It stems from not knowing. We did not know how to say it right. We did not know how to do it right. So this is how we did it. And so then it's even the, the question of well, who made it right. I mean, that's the the place that we were brought to is culture. We are a subculture within that. Our subculture is is more uh, popular. It's cooler. I don't know. It's more interesting, right? Fofo Fofo sound better than four for four. So, like, it's more interesting than the dominant culture. So, our culture typically dominates, right? So, it's uh, widely accepted, right? It's easy for me to, like, I'm, I'm fine with it. I can be ratchet. I don't have to. Everybody, ratchet TV is in. Like, that's culture. We're cool. But sometimes I wonder, are they just at home laughing at us? Because when I look at the white kids, when I go to GW, when I'm on American University campus, that's what they do to have fun. They mock us. They do that in their spare time. So now not only are, only are like, basketball players and entertainers entertainers, but just our whole culture is entertaining to them. We got we put it on TV. They laugh at it. Ha ha. <laughs> Look at these stupid. You know what I'm saying? They fighting over nothing. They don't have no emotional intelligence. They know what the fuck it is. Like we 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 just look stupid to them. So in the in the overall culture, is it that we are still being like the the show monkey? Like the the like are we still being the entertainment in that way? Or are we um? And, oh, and then they go do their studies or then they go liquidate their credit cards or their life insurance account and go make a business real quick. Like, they already had the steps, already knew what to do, already know the people, already, you get what I'm saying, can get into places and what, what not. And we over here fighting and talking about dumb stuff or, you know, bags and bougie and like but bougie with with no inner work done so it looked good right but it got a bad attitude you know what i'm saying it it it's not trying to it want bags and not land you know it's not into you know what i'm saying like it's not it's shallow it's hollow here we go hollow shallow how hollow all that like it's not it just look good right like and then they imitate that because it looks good, and we and we and that's on TV, and we want that, and all all the the popping dudes want that, right? But that necessarily don't even want that. Like that still got stuff to work on, in a sense. I don't know where I'm going with this, but <laughs> either way, what I'm saying is, are they are they mocking us, mocking our culture, but really not wanting us? Then they mocking us, but not even realizing that they're mocking our trauma. And then I feel like if we were to come together and really start this healing movement that I'm starting, I claim that that's on me. Hey, um, like to, to, to really be vulnerable and to really be able to say what we're thinking and be able to, to like, I tell people, Hey, this is upsetting me. And I, and I give, sometimes I give warnings. But not even, it's, I, I'll consider it a warning, but I'll say something like, this is upsetting me. You know, I don't, don't do this particular thing. I can't think of nothing specific. But don't do this particular thing because I don't like getting yelled at. You know? Or I have blacked out before when somebody kept doing that to me, so please don't do that. And so certain people will be like, is that a threat? And try to poke at that. Like, when you, have you ever heard somebody... Get in your face and be like, hit me, hit me, hit me. Or like some something dumb like that, like trying to provoke you, trying to make you, trying to trigger you to the point. Or you'd be like, don't hit me, don't hit me. And you'd be like, or what? Just don't hit me, don't hit me. Or you're going to see. And then as soon as you say something like that, and it's like, that's your warning. Like, it's not a threat. It's a warning because I know myself to like not be giving a fuck about none of that, right? So, what can I do? 
it's, 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 it goes back to what can I do? How do I learn myself enough to know that I have these certain traits? If I'm higher on the scale, right? If I'm if I'm held back by trauma, I have to do everything in my power to get down on that scale. And so to me, I feel like narcissism can be fixed. It can be changed. It can be morphed. I feel like the trauma is still there. So you will have the urge, like Victoria, little Victoria being, she's in the back. And so the trauma is still there. So I could get high on the scale, right, if I get deregulated. But I typically stay low. And so that's why I get confused because I'm like, am I a narcissist? Right? Do I have these traits? Am I high on the scale? And I have gotten myself down by myself because nobody has ever diagnosed me. But knowing my inner self and really being honest with my inner self, I'm like, dog, you're not shit, bro. Like, you're not shit. And that's why you're not getting to what you want. All right. So what do you need to do to become shit? Like, how do you be great? Like, make Victoria great again. Great again. Like, what the fuck? What, what do we got to do? Like, what do we got to do? So I had to be real with myself and throw it all on the table. And so when I do that with other people, they get offended. Oh, offended. I was, okay. Too much enunciating. That ain't even in there. But anyway, um, they get offended. Like, just big mad, right? And it's like, oh, this is what I do with myself. I got to lay it on the table. I'm broke. I ain't got no job. I'm doing this. This, I ain't, this ain't working. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I got to put the shit on the table. This what we got? All right. Let me say that to a man. Lord. Okay? I didn't just... He hate me now. Why am I lying, though? Like, this is your situation. Like, why are you mad? Like, if this is your starting point, this is your starting point. I'm right here, bro. He's higher on the scale. He can't see that. I just poked at his ego. I just... I just exposed him to him, Right? So it's like, I'm seeing all these things. I'm seeing this stuff. And I'm like, this is so common, especially in my culture of the hood. So I'm like, is a lot, do, do a lot of us have these, these higher traits? Are a lot of us on the spectrum higher? Is a lot of us, because some of us, it's, it's not narcissism. It's a sociopath. Like, we don't have no empathy. I don't give a fuck. I have no feelings. I will shoot you in your face. I have no feelings. That is a sociopath. But that could be your brother. Right? That could be your mother. And so I was like, I don't see them as that. But these are the things mentally that's going on. Right? So for me, it was hard for a while. I think in this moment, I'm hearing myself say it. And it's like, that is it, bro. Thank you, Lord. Because I felt like. I had to deal with anything because that's my boyfriend. That's my friend. That's my whoever, right? And I don't have to. I don't have to, one, deal with those things. If I feel I do, because a lot of times I do feel I do, I have to have boundaries. I'm talking about rock solid boundaries. And they can't be boundaries for a little bit. And then, uh... They keep asking, so no, I shut it out. I said no. If you keep asking me, this is what's going to happen. You're overstepping my boundaries. When I know that I'm with a narcissist, I'd be like, boundaries. If they keep asking something, they'd be like, oh, you're right, you're right. Ten minutes later, can I get boundaries? Like, message. Like, I'm not. Boundaries, okay? I call it out. If you get defensive when I say something that's simple, okay, I, your, your insecurities are showing. I understand, but just calm down. It's okay. Your insecurities are showing. It's, n it's nothing wrong. Like, I'm not mad. Calm down. Take a minute. Let's take five. But your insecurities are showing. And you know I'm the one to fix your crown. It's okay. For everybody, that don't work. Your insecurities are showing. They cut off. <laughs> you got insecurities too. <laughs> you fat. Okay. That's, I'm not insecure about that. Like... I am fat. The fuck? Like, <laughs> what the fuck I'm insecure about is the reason why I'm fat. The reason why I'm fat is because the trauma is so motherfucking thick. It just be sitting there with it. Like, it got me sitting there with it. You feel me? Like, if there's anything to be insecure about, I'm not insecure about the fact that I'm fat. I love telling people, hey, instead of eating, I've been investing. Yes, yes. As soon as I be like, yeah, I deserve some cheesecake, I be like, ripper. Let me go ahead and take that money I was about to spend and go get me some, uh, some stock. 
public storage or something. Okay? <laughs> something. I need so very much something. Like what? <laughs> I need something. <laughs> okay? You was about to spend that money on something. No, no. You said you was going to make it work. Okay? You was about to take $9 and go fuck it up at whoever the fuck. Here, take that 9 Go ahead and get that stock. Get a problem with that sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. I don't eat deli meat. I walked right past it the other day and was shaking my head. And then I was observing myself like, girl, you didn't change. Like, the fuck? <laughs> you didn't change. Yes, I have. Okay, I don't want none of that. I ain't even ate today. Why am I fasting? I don't got no reason. <laughs> I'm looking looking around like, shouldn't I be eating food? Like, no, yeah, I was supposed to have some uh, some avocado and um, toast, but I ain't got no toast. But I could have had some cereal. I got some oats, raisin, cinnamon, and dry bananas, and uh, with some almond milk. I just be making my own cereal because I like raisin bran, so I might as well just make my little oat oat stuff. I need to get some bran. What's that stuff? Them, them flakes. Ooh, I wonder if I can buy that. Yeah, I gotta look into that. But anyway, um, <laughs> I got me thinking about food now. I already know. But I'm saying, though, like, the trauma, trauma, basically everything is connected, and I see it, and I want to fix it, and in order for me to fix it, I got to be blunt with myself. So, I'm like, I haven't been diagnosed, right? But I see these things, and so I'm like, maybe in therapy, I haven't said my innermost personal things that really get you diagnosed for certain things, right? Because they weren't asking the right questions, because they weren't. They were clinicians and not trauma uh, specialists or something. Like, there's a difference. Everybody don't know. So, every therapist cannot deal with the average black person. Uh, you know, I don't want to say average, but, like, the... I don't want to say typical lord. <laughs> I'm not... Because people be funny. So, I mean, like, the inner city youth. And not even the inner city youth. Because, you know people out of Mississippi going through stuff, like, right, right now, like, right now, I was out in Jackson, it looked nice, okay, um, but, nah, it's some parts of Jackson that right now, it's three families staying in the house that, you, you, y'all seen the Jackson documentary on Netflix, bro, like, right now, stuff is happening, so, what I'm saying is, for those of us, who have been struck in by trauma and it has gotten us to this place where we just feel oppressed and like and or still oppressed because I don't want to say that we never were and I I don't want to say that we are now but we still are in certain ways but healing ourselves is what I believe will allow us to heal the rest of whatever that residue of oppression has you know, because once we are all together and we all have businesses or we all are as one. So whether we run the business um, or or run the business because workers run that itch. But so whether we came up with the vision or we actually bringing it to life, if we're all on one accord and if we're all healing, if we're all doing the right things with our stuff, if we're all... Um, having our you know using having our beliefs and going into penetrate and it's all of us and we all have an agenda and we can all use that to spread out our message then yeah we can change things but if it's just this group over here and this group over here sometimes they meet up but every once in a while you know they get publicity when bad stuff happen but we want the bad stuff to stop happening but the bad stuff is what help us get our message out it's like what it's not working like you feel me it does it's not working it, it, you know what i'm saying like it's like a bottomless pit we keep pouring money in it but it doesn't seem like hey you looking down there y'all get any of that money 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 i'm sorry i'm anime but <laughs> like and they like I seen a few dollars fall. And you're like, a few dollars? <laughs> we said millions. I know. I'm just like, <laughs> but I don't know what to do with these millions, baby. Like, 
You give me a, you give me this money and you helping my family and you doing X, Y, and Z, but I ain't got no information for real, right? And we not necessarily on this movement, but this bad thing just happened to us, right? So yeah, we gonna sue. That's what you do, right? It's about money, like it, the, the Bible and the spirituality, the great book, um, all the things. Cause I I got beliefs about stuff, okay? So I I can't be claiming too many things, but I observe. You know, I observe and I, de- I identify with a lot of things. So I identify with the great book and me and God, we be talking. All right. And so I'm, I'm more connected than anything. I don't, um, and I, and I, and I know it's God because he say stuff that, that stopped me in my tracks. Like, whoop, whoop. like oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and I always use the example of like Cheesecake Factory. Like, why can't I go to the Cheesecake Factory? I deserve the Cheesecake. I can go to the Cheesecake Factory. Why can't you go to the Cheesecake Factory? At first, it used to be because you ain't got no money. Like, whoop, the beast stop. And that, like, okay, mind your business, you know. But then, now, it's like, because you don't need that poison. Like, you don't need all them American sweets. Like, every once in a while, in moderation, maybe. But you don't need to go in there and be doing all that. Not with no vision. Not without no vision. You go in there just on a whim. You leave out with two pieces of cheesecake. For what? Like, no. That wasn't part of the plan. So now you gain weight. Or you feeling sluggish. It's too much. It's, you don't even need that. Like, you don't even need those things. Like, that's that's not what you, you know, that's not what you need. And then I want to get to a place of being vegan. And sometimes I even want to get to a place of being raw, but right now myself can't see it. I just, you know, I'm growing, okay? So, <laughs> I'm growing. I ain't grown. <laughs> I ain't grown. That's the thing about it. That's the thing about it. I be talking to my roommate, like, bro. He'd be like, I'm grown. He'd, he'd be like, we're grown. Or something. And it's like, so if somebody tell me that, I know that they're immature and want control. And I said that to him. Like, when you say that, that's what I hear. <laughs> like, I cannot help it, but that's what I hear. Because a grown person is not going to tell me that. They're going to show me that. They're going to exude that. They're not going to tell me I'm grown. Right? They're going to say other things. We have choices. You know, choose wisely. Like, something else. They're not going to be like, we grown. We could do this. And then, like, and then a grown person is not going to be trying to um, talk me into something. Or manipulate me. Or um, show me how much, how how grown they are. Or any of those things. Like, they're not going to do that. That is a person who wants to be grown, wants to feel in control of something, who who didn't, whose something was taken, their silence, their freedom, their something, right? And so now they're busting out and they're doing these things where they want to be grown. Because they are grown, they can give their body away. Because they are grown, they can do these drugs. Because they are grown, they can be whatever, right? It's because they are grown. And I'm a child, boy. <laughs> I am a child. My father is God. I ain't even going to hold you. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay? Like I say, like Steve Harvey, what I'm doing. Like, I don't know. Wh- how, you, how you do that? Wh- like a whip. Wh- what is going on? I don't know what is happening. Okay? I don't know, child. I don't know. So I am not grown. I am growing. All right? So with that, I got to go find me some food or something. And I feel like this was a great little talk. I don't know what we talked about, child, but we was talking about we Stuff on my heart. There's just stuff on my heart. I got this book right here. I'm excited to read. Um, I'm going to put that book back. Ooh, mayday. All right, but definitely. Um, And then my other book, Yana Tree. Oh, man. By Andrea Kitten Perry. Yes. Okay. Had to get her name right. Yeah. Follow her. She lit. And I just love that book because on the healing journey, you want to see other people that have overcome their pain. Right? You want to see other people 
who have been going through these things or other people who have met, met these misfortunes as well and overcame them. Because a lot of times we feel like this is going to kill me. I am not going to get through this. I can't do that. And Will Smith says right on the other side of that is bliss. Just right on the other side of that is something that we thought we could not do. And we did it. So, shout out to us doing it, y'all. We're doing it. Um, my book is coming out. You're not crazy, okay? You're not crazy. It's your, self, your self-help healing guide to recognizing, healing, and getting through your trauma. But first, we have to recognize it. What is trauma? What is it? And what is it doing to our brain? Are we like that? Is that just how I am? Or is that how they made me? I guarantee you a lot of times, that's how they made you. So, make sure you do some healing today. Process why you do what you do. I don't say this for a reason. I live by this. Make sure you do some healing today. Peace and healing, y'all. I'm out.